Let's solve Unit 3 Programming Languages and Computer Graphics Questions. Arrange the following in correct order so that they can follow a proper runtime environment. What is called a runtime environment? It's the environment in which a program is executed. In this environment, we have two kinds of time. One is the compile time and other one is runtime. Compile time is the period when the programming code is converted to the machine code. Runtime is the period of time when a program is running and this generally occurs after compile time. Here the question is about in which order if we arrange all these options, we can follow a proper runtime environment. There are two interpretations to this question. Let me start with the first one. Generally in a runtime environment, the first process that takes place will be compilation. When you want to run a particular program, say let's take C language. When you want to run a C program, the first task that will take place will be compilation. When compilation occurs, what it will do? It will go and take every statement in the source code and from the statement, it will start taking the tokens. It has to segment the program statement into different tokens. This tokens can here be equated to from the statement, we are picking up the variables based on the type of variable, we are going to allocate memory and once the program is over, the memory will be deallocated. This will be the overall flow when we consider a programming language which uses compilation process and then the program runs. There is also an other interpretation where they say there is a programming statement with the statement we are going to compile it when we compile we pick the variable from the variable we take the type based on the type we go for memory allocation and then after the program is over it goes for memory deallocation this is another interpretation which one is correct if we get into these two interpretations i would say both are right because it is the context that defines it when they are going to ask what is going to happen when you press F5 the process starts from it will first compile then it will pick up all those variables then it will allocate memory it will come in this way but before compilation you have to type some source code only when there is a source code there is a use of compilation even this order is right the one who has said this question paper knows the exact context behind this question from here you can be sure type of variable is option d memory allocation is option c and memory d allocation is option e whichever has d c e can be considered and the rest of the options can be removed now the question here is whether it is compilation and programming statement or programming statement and compilation since they use the term proper runtime environment i'll pick up this interpretation because runtime is when the program is running and runtime environment is that environment where the program is executed so i'll consider this to be pressing the run key when i want to execute a program so when I press run, the first work that compiled languages will do is they will compile the program and inside compile process, I will go for interpreting the statement, picking the type of variable, memory allocation and deallocation. So I'll go with this order and I'll be marking option number three as the right answer. In case you go with this particular interpretation, you can mark A, B, D, C, E as the answer. This can also be considered. But when you take runtime environment perspective, when you run a program, the first work that it will do will be compile only. So in that case, we are picking compilation process to be the first order. So compilation followed by programming statement. Then we have type of variable, memory allocation and memory deallocation. Next question, which of the following is the markup language? Markup language is when you use tag like structures to write some article or to write some document for the web. Let's now see about all the five options. Hypertext markup language called as HTML is the standard markup language for documents designed to be displayed in a web browser. What about XML? Extensible markup language is a markup language and 
a file format for storing transmitting and reconstructing arbitrary data when html is just for display purpose when you want to carry some data between documents there comes the usage of xml what about dhtml when you expand it it is actually dynamic html dynamic hypertext markup language but this is not an independent markup language this is not a language but it is a term that is used for the use of html css and various client side scripting languages we can say javascript html is used actually for static display in order to induce dynamic behavior to the html we are using css and client side scripting languages like javascript so html is a stand alone markup language without even the use of css and javascript it can display the content but when you want css and javascript's work to be seen on the content you obviously need html elements because when you define behavior for javascript elements you will be using the id attribute or the class attribute from the html element if i am going to have a tag called div and the id is called as div1 when i want to induce some dynamic behavior this id part will be selected similarly when i have div class is equal to some name when i want to induce a particular behavior to the class element totally this particular name will be selected javascript is used for defining the behavior for the elements present in html similarly css also defines certain style formats for the elements present inside html so these two together give dynamic behavior to html content which is static in that case c cannot be a markup language any option that includes c has to be removed which says that no option can be chosen for this question what about lml the life cycle modeling language is an open standard modeling language designed for systems engineering so it is not in the category of markup language d can be ruled out and i will even rule out c here what about pml practical markup language is a light weight and powerful markup language to write beautiful articles and books in html you have to additionally go for css code to make it beautiful but practical markup language allows you to create beautiful articles though it is light weight they have mentioned that it is a powerful markup language now if you take the options html xml and pml will be the right answer you cannot go for a b and c because c is not a markup language it is a term next question multiple inheritance is permitted directly in all of the languages may allow multiple inheritance but some languages do not allow you to directly implement it there are other ways to implement it we have to find which languages directly permit the use of multiple inheritance what is multiple inheritance a class can inherit properties and methods from more than one base class class c is derived class it inherits properties and methods from two base classes one base class is class a and the other base class is class b while most of the object oriented languages support inheritance not all support multiple inheritance now we will see about the options c++ allows multiple inheritance python supports all types of inheritance including multiple inheritance these two languages have no issues what about the other three options java does not support multiple inheritance directly through classes due to the complexity and ambiguity it can cause so this term does not support states java will not be included in the option any option that includes b should be taken out we'll remove these two what about vb.net visual basic allows only single inheritance in classes but here the option is about .net when visual basic is implemented in the .net framework it is vb.net in .net you can create two kinds of applications one is c sharp and another one is vb.net 
So here the question is about VB.NET. This .NET is actually the framework. VB is the actual language here. Now let's see about basic beginners all purpose symbolic instruction code this is a general purpose and high level programming language this does not support object oriented programming but languages like visual basic vb.net what they have given they have actually been influenced by basic since inheritance belongs to object oriented programming aspect we can say that basic is not object oriented programming language now we will see how multiple inheritance can be implemented in java and vb.net java allows multiple inheritance using interfaces when you define an interface extending the interface you can actually implement multiple inheritance just take that interface to be a class then the work is going to be done similar to multiple inheritance although multiple inheritance is not allowed in visual basic classes can implement multiple interfaces both these languages will implement multiple inheritance through the use of interface what about basic this will be the coding format of basic language this is how they will write 10 20 30 40 50 60 it goes on so anything that is marked in yellow here are the keywords there is a keyword called rem r e m this rem is used for denoting the comments so it has provision for comments for normal statements for loops for branching statements everything is available that's why they have put it in the class of general purpose and high level programming language so from this we can say option number two a and c only will be the right answer multiple inheritance is permitted directly in c plus plus and python the rest of the three options can be ruled out next question which of the following is not an object oriented programming language perl is the correct spelling perl is an object oriented dynamic and interpreter based programming language perl is object oriented what about python we all know python is an object oriented programming language what about small talk it is a purely object oriented programming language that was originally created in the 1970s a reflective oop language known for its simplicity dynamic nature and highly interactive development environment primitive values such as integers booleans and characters are also objects that's why they give the term purely object oriented programming language so small talk is also oop what about sql plus it's a client terminal software it is not an object oriented programming language so from here we can mark option 4 to be the right answer let's continue about sql plus it allows users to interact with oracle server to manipulate data and data structures what is structured query language you can fetch or manipulate data or object in a database we use ddl commands dml commands in sql so it is for data manipulation as well as for data retrieval sql plus is actually an integrated development environment ide where you can give sql statement to do a specific task that's why they have given it allows users to interact sql is neither object oriented nor procedure oriented actually they come under declarative kind of statements the select statement the insert statement the delete statement update statement create statement will actually say what to do but the statement will never say how to do pl sql is a completely portable high performance transaction processing language that supports object oriented programming so sql is given the oop feature using pl sql but sql plus is actually a client terminal software using that environment you can give sql statement to get your work done so this is not an object oriented programming language next question the output of the following c plus plus program is inside the main program int x and a pointer p both are declared here x is given the value of 30 and pointer is given the value of x what is actually the use of pointer to assign the address of a variable here they have just assigned the variable without the address symbol ampersand they are asking what is the printf statement going to print 
this is actually right while printing a pointer you have to print it with asterisk symbol that is right but here this ampersand x is missing and instead they have just equated integer variable to pointer variable when you execute this program you will get a error stating assignment to int from int makes pointer from integer without a cast from int means this is x and int star is when you are assigning something to p it should be of the pointer type and not the integer type take any online compiler and then try executing this code you will have this fault mentioned at the last when the write statement p is equal to ampersand x is mentioned here then the output will give 30 when i say asterisk p it means i have to pick the value from the address what is the value present in the address of x it is 30 30 will be printed only when the statement is ampersand x since we get error out of this code we can mark option 4 error to be the right answer next question match list 1 with list 2 union and function belong to programming languages part interactive environment and output device belong to computer graphics part let's see for union we know about struct union what are they actually they are user defined data types so when i want to use union or structure i will be defining some name some characters some decimal numbers these variables inside the particular block will be of basic data types like int float character but here whatever we create comes under struct and union the struct and union will be similar to a class they don't function like a class but the structure will be similar to a class so we can mark a to 4 a4 is available in two of the options we can rule out the other two union will be mapping to user defined data type what about function function means a set of statements that is going to do some task what is subroutine then it is also having the same meaning function will be mapping to subroutine b3 we can also rule out option 2 option number 1 will be the right answer virtual reality is a computer generated environment with scenes and objects that appear to be real making the user feel they are immersed in their surroundings you could have seen people playing with games in vr scenario since we have scenes and objects that appear to be real the user is actually interacting with the environment only then you can be present in the virtual reality environment so we can mark interactive environment to virtual reality c21 what is a shadow mask shadow mask methods are commonly used in raster scan systems you can find this topic in computer graphics including color tv because they produce a much wider range of colors than the beam penetration method under which topic you can find these details video display devices so when you start the computer graphics book it will start with the video display devices in that when you go for raster scan systems you can find this shadow mask method so when raster scan system comes or when you see color tv here or when you take the topic video display devices what is it about it is about the output given so we can map d output device to shadow mask d to 2 next question for line drawing which of the following algorithms are used when we learn about line drawing algorithms we come across two algorithms in the book digital differential analyzer called the dda algorithm and the Bresenham's line algorithm a and b are line algorithms so we'll go with option 3 as the right answer option 3 a and b will be the right answer the midpoint algorithm is not a line algorithm it is actually useful for drawing circles as well as for ellipse so if this is going to be a circle this is going to be an ellipse this is the purpose of the midpoint so when they say midpoint algorithm it either applies to circle algorithm or ellipse algorithm and not line algorithm curve algorithm it is not for drawing lines but it is for drawing curves with this we are completing unit 3 solutions